So I don't know about you, but I have really noticed that the price of uh, flowers and different bedding plants that you get at the greenhouse are really going up in price. I used to be able to go and buy all the flowers and fillers for my, my pots and flower beds at the greenhouse easily for, you know, less than a hundred dollars. Um, now, you know, if I was to buy everything that I actually wanted, it would be hundreds of dollars. And so the last few years I have been starting a lot of my flower seeds uh, myself indoors. And I want to show you that, you know, it's not really that hard and it is a great way to save money. So I'm going to be doing some pansies, petunias, coleuses. These are things that I love to uh, put in my pots and in my flower beds. I've collected some petunia seeds, which I have shown how to do in other videos. It's very easy. So let's get started and let's get planting some flowers. So if you are someone who starts your vegetables indoors, like your tomatoes, peppers, onions, um, eggplants, those kind of things that need to be started indoors, you know, before the f several weeks before the last frost date, then you may have a lot of supplies you you need just to do the flowers. And one of the things here that I like to use is a 72 cell system. This is also great for, you know, spacing issues. If you don't have a lot of space to start your indoor seedlings, like I say you can get a lot going in this small space. It fits nicely on a seedling heat mat, which is um, which I highly recommend for flowers because it really helps with that success rate and that uniform germination. I don't start tons of tomatoes and peppers for my garden. I'm a small gardener, so I like to use these solo cups or you know something that is like a three or four inch size pot to start my tomatoes, peppers, and squashes maybe indoors right in one of these so I don't have to worry about potting up. But for flowers, I like a whole ton of them. Like you can never have too many petunias and pansies. You know, there's always somewhere you can stick them. So that's kind of where I focus on more of, you know, quantity as opposed to my vegetables because, you know, I want a lot of them. Once they are get to that, you know, four or six leaf stage and they need to be potted up into bigger containers, we're getting close to, you know, last frost date. I got lots of sunlight in my garage windows. So if you have sunny windows, it's very easy to transfer them into a sunny window and you don't have to worry about space under the grow lights. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how to get the tray set up here. So because we're just going to be using this for starting the seeds and then potting them up into larger containers later, I'm just going to be using a seed starting mix such as this Jiffy Premium. It just is a mixture of sphagnum moss, a little bit of vermiculite. So it's very light. It's very easy for the seeds to germinate. You don't want anything too heavy. So I filled it all up and want to make sure that you don't have any air pockets in it. So when you get it about halfway filled, it's a good idea to go around and press that dirt in. Make sure it's in there good and tight. You can also moisten it prior to putting into your cells if you want. I actually put it in dry and then bottom filled the tray with a bunch of water and also gave the top a good spraying. So either way works, it's, it's up to you. And so as I am planting up the seeds, it's going to be wicking up the water from the bottom. And setting it up in a tray like this is highly recommended so that you can bottom water your seedlings as opposed to uh, surface watering because that can displace your seeds. It also can, you know, help bring on that damping off problem where you get a bit of um, bacteria or mold growing on your surface here that can kill off your seedling. So I'm just doing two colors of petunias today. I may plant some more, but I like to have a good supply of white petunias because they, you know, they go good with anything. So White petunias can be hard to find sometimes in greenhouses. They get picked um, quickly and the supply usually um, dwindles very quickly in greenhouses. So I always like to get a good supply of white going. And I've really been liking these black petunias. Uh, they're called the Sophistica Blackberry. They make a really uh, nice showcase in a container with the white. But as you can see, the price here on these petunias is $4.99. And this is what you get. It's a little um, holder here that I think has 10 
pelleted seeds in it. So basically they're costing you 50 cents a piece and germination rate, um, you know, not sure how successful it's going to be. So last fall, I pulled some of the branches off of my black petunias. I just kept them in a paper bag over winter. And then this spring, I just kind of went through them and sifted them. And I got a very small supply of super tiny seeds here. So we're going to try starting those as well. And we can compare to see, you know, um, how these ones that I harvested from last year's plants do compared to the, the new seeds that I just purchased. Pansies, unfortunately, I didn't collect seeds last year, and it's super easy. I don't know, sometimes you just fall, things get away on you, and uh, I didn't get any collected, but they also are very easy to collect. But we're just going to try to get a good variety going here. $2, not a lot to spend. Coleus. Coleus is one of my favorites to put into pots, and so I thought I'll just start off with one of these rainbow mixes that gets you a whole different variety of different coleuses and we will see how successful we are with getting these going. So when you're working with these tiny little seeds I highly recommend that you get some kind of a little white dish like this or a clear dish something that you can safely put your seeds into while you work with them because man if you spill these you know they're god make sure you don't sneeze <laughs> or they could be all blown away so I'm just going to try and open up this and dump them in here. I like to work with a toothpick as well. So I just wetted my toothpick so that I could easily grab one of these seeds. So you can see that you can pick it up quite easily. Just gently put it on top of the soil here. We're not going to press it in too far. Try to and put one per cell and hopefully last year I did the same thing I planted 10 I only got two or three successfully germinate so that was a little disappointing somehow I've only got nine here I don't know somewhere I think I planted two accidentally in one and like I said it's really hard to see once you got this in here and there's vermiculite and little pieces of stuff so no big deal I'm just going to go with that. I want to be able to mark this so I know exactly where I planted these. So I've made these little markers here. I'm going to put one right here. It'll mark these three. I'm just going to put a little dollar sign just showing that those are the ones that I purchased and paid for. So I can keep track. Now we don't want to bury these too deep. And we don't want them to get displaced when we water them. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this vermiculite. It's nice and fine just to cover it up. You can also use just a little more of the uh, steed starting mix as well. That will work. And because these are pelleted, they got a bit of a coating on them. I expect that these will take longer to germinate than the ones that I harvested from my, my outdoor plants. They usually pop up pretty quick. So I just dumped in my uh, seeds that I had harvested myself for the black petunias in there. Now it's pretty hard to see, but there are quite a few little tiny seeds in there. There's also, you know, a lot of um, just chafe and stuff from the plant. So it's, you know, really hard to, to separate them so I'm going to just try to do a light sprinkle in as many cells as I can here see how many of these I can get going really don't know but I can, you can kind of feel the the thickness of the seed between your fingers compared to uh, whether it's just you know pieces of chafe or broken up leaves so I think I'm going to be getting, you know, several of these in each of these cells. I get a little sloppy here. I know sometimes you end up with stuff growing in, in the cell next to it because things kind of jump around, but that's okay. So again, I'm just going to cover with a light layer of the vermiculite. 
I was able to collect quite a few more white petunia seeds this year, so I have a pretty good supply here. Again, there's a lot of chafe and ground up um, plant material, but I can see that we seem to have some seeds in there. So I'm going to try and get two rows of the white petunia going here. Again, I'm just going to sprinkle. So petunias are super, super tiny when they first germinate. You have to really look hard to spot them, but uh, it's very exciting to see when they do. And they seem to be pretty hardy. If you got them on a heat mat and, you know, you're keeping them moist and warm, uh, they do well. And, you know, they're not super fast growers, so you can keep them in these trays for, you know, a good month or so before you have to start thinking about potting them up. So the pansy seeds are quite a bit larger and I think a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so four rows of pansies are planted and I'm running low on my vermiculite, but hopefully I'm going to have enough to cover everything here today. As I said, you can also just use some of the seed starting mix to cover just very lightly. Most of these types of flower seeds uh, need light to germinate, so you don't want to bury them too deep. So now I'm going to be setting these on a heat mat under grow lights that will be set to come on for about 16 hours a day, shut off for eight hours. The heat mat will be on 24 hours a day on the whole time until germination. And once your uh, seedlings get to, you know, past that two leaf stage and are getting going, that's usually when you want to remove it off of the heat mat. Okay, so there is 72 cells of a whole variety of flowers all planted up. As far as seeds here, I've invested about $10. I've used some of the seeds that I collected myself. I'm using a container that I've, you know, get many years use out of. Seed starting mix is very economical. And if you can get these to germinate and up pot them into bigger cells, so I think, you know, doing it this way, you are saving yourself a hundred, if not several hundred dollars. You could do this on a couple different 72 inch cells and get all sorts of flowers started. I know I will be starting some more later in the season that don't take as long. Most of these are 10 to 12 weeks before last frost date. So that's why we're starting them now. So these are ready to go under the grow lights. It's also recommended if you have a humidity dome like this to put it on top to help keep that moisture in there. So as I mentioned earlier, having a seedling heat mat under flowers is highly recommended. It really helps speed up that germination and helps, you know, with more consistent germination. So if you haven't done so, I would recommend uh, doing these if you're one who's starting plants indoors, tomatoes, peppers, flowers, you know, a seedling heat mat is always going to get used and will last you for many years. So I've just lowered the lights here to get as close as I can to the surface here so that they are getting the maximum light when they germinate. These are just LED lights that I purchased, I believe, from Lowe's. They are a Fiat brand. They are not actual grow lights. They're just LEDs and they've been working great for me in all my indoor growing for the past couple years I'll leave a link to them below so flowers are planted I got ornamental grasses started onions are going next so please stay tuned for the next video coming up on the channel I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you will try growing your own flowers indoors saving yourself tons of money and thank you for watching see you on the next video